A veterinarian noticed the strange ultrasound of a pregnant tigress and immediately alerted John Pringle liked animals as a child and he grew up surrounded by different kinds of creatures including two dogs, two cats, guinea pigs, rabbits and more little boys who fell in love with these creatures and knew he wanted to work with them when he grew up so when John grew up he decided to open his own zoo and this man made sure his zoo had as many exotic animals as possible from wolves to lions John. Zoo had a lot of boastful residents but the zoo owner's favorite animals were tigers and he found their huge size and beautiful fur really unbelievable and he loved watching them in the enclosure because they went to their day John wasn't the only one who found tigers fascinating even though many members of the public came to see the animals in the zoo also liked big cats around the tiger's fence. Because park visitors are curious and want to see these magical animals. Generally speaking, there are only two tigers in John Zoo, and John named them Julie and Sheed. These two tigers can often be found lying lazily around the fence enjoying the sunshine. However, in order to make them a little more fun for visitors, sometimes John would come up with interesting ways to feed the animals, such as freezing their meat in a piece of ice, and the big cats had to push it around. Zookeepers also hang tiger food from tall trees and hide it around the fence. This will make animals jump around and play, which will entertain tourists. However, a few years after the zoo opened, the number of tourists began to decline, no tourists pay to see animals, the zoo began to lose money, John is worried that he will eventually close the scenic spot. And send his animals to other places, to prevent this from happening, a good way for men to decide to bring new customers is to introduce a small animal into the park. Because tigers are his favorite animals, he decided to keep them for the next few months. John made every effort to find a male tiger to breed with his female. But wherever he looks, he couldn't find a legal breeder with a viable male and became very desperate to want a cub. John began to look for more suspicious businesses who might be able to help him. Eventually this man was able to find a man who had a male tiger, they were happy to let it breed with tigress Julie John was ecstatic, and make an appointment as soon as possible. However, the breeders wanted Julie to be taken to their enclosure, and leave with them, and she was pregnant. John was a little suspicious at first. But he was determined to have some tiger cubs and he agreed to the keeper's conditions. Soon Julie showed up pregnant so John had the vet visit the zoo to make sure she would have any cubs in the ultrasound examination and the vet did he confirmed that the tigress was pregnant and all her cubs looked healthy and growing well John couldn't believe his dream was coming true and he was going to have a litter of tiger cubs to help promote the zoo as months went by Julie began to get bigger and bigger. And it was easy to see that the tigress was pregnant and she looked like she was ready. To give birth any day soon however despite her size and apparent discomfort Julie refused to give birth to her cubs John was very confused and he didn't know why the big cat didn't want to have her baby and he even made sure the fence and her delivery cage were as comfortable and safe as possible so that Julie didn't become too nervous but despite all the things the zoo owner did for her this tigress refusing to let her cubs worry about the animal's health John and her children together decided to call the vet to see if they could spot the problem. However, when the vet arrived at the zoo to examine the animals, he noticed something very strange and immediately called the police. When the veterinarian arrived at John Zoo, he quickly walked to the tiger, who was already lying down and could no longer stand up. The animal seemed to be in great pain, and both the vet and John were worried that the big cat had serious problems. The vet began examining the tigress river's stomach to see if he could feel anything unusual. He was surprised when he found a strange hard lump in her lower abdomen. The vet quickly sedated Julie and began her ultrasound examination to see what he could find. A few minutes later, the vet suddenly stopped the ultrasound, tell John, he needed to make a quick phone call confused and John agreed, watching the vet walk away for a few minutes past, the vet went back to the operating room, at this point, John asked him if everything was alright. His tiger vet assured him that things would be fine, but he needs to wait for some backups. Because he needed to perform a minor surgery about 15 minutes later John suddenly heard sirens and sounded like police officers more like they were heading to the zoo and sure enough only moments later a police car stopped at the zoo and two police officers got out of the car and John asked the vet what happened and the man replied that he thought there was an illegally implanted tigress which caused her a lot of pain and the vet then told John that he was. 
going to have to perform a minor surgery to get the implanted animals while he was doing so the police asked John where he got his tigers and why he kept them and who he used as the breeder was completely confused and concerned about John answering all the questions because he could honestly he told the police the breeder he used and how they made him when he tried to get Julie pregnant and handed her over to them I explained to John that he used his breeder, notorious for selling exotic animals. On the black market, may have placed implants on the tigress to track her and her cubs. By doing so, he can steal the cubs for sale. Later John was shocked by this discovery, and he had no idea that anyone would do such a thing to these majestic and innocent animals. Once police were satisfied with John's report, they collected the implants from the vet and left the zoo in the hope that they would eventually be able to catch the keeper. As for Julie, the veterinarian helped her give birth to three lovely and healthy tiger cubs. However, John could hardly believe his eyes when he finally saw the little tigers, one of whom was a pure white tiger, a very rare animal. The man realized that what the keeper might have to try was this cub. Fortunately, the police and veterinarian helped him to have a lovely tiger family. After a few days rest in the zoo, John finally got Julie and her babies back in their enclosure. Lovely family brings many new patrons to the zoo, meaning it can stay open. John, however, was only delighted to see this magical tiger family communicate and play with each other, which was more than he had ever asked for. Shortly after the cub was born, John also received a message from the police that they had found the breeder who had implanted Julie and arrested him. John was glad that now his tigers were not in danger, and that they could live and grow happily together. By the time police realized why, the lion was blocking the road. Their hearts are broken, the mystery of how five clever lions were able to escape their enclosure at Tarana Zoo has been solved as new CCTV footage shows the exact moment they broke free. Footage shows lion cubs Razuko, Suri, Kari and Malika, and a full-grown male named Otto sniffing around the enclosure. The zoo declared a level 1 emergency after one of the cubs escaped through a hole in the metal fence and was soon chased by others. When an animal breaks free from a zoo, all alarms in the facility activate simultaneously. Terrifying footage shows the escaped lions driving along the outer perimeter of the enclosure, while vehicles and pickups trail them at slow speeds. Vans and pickup trucks are trying to catch up to the lion. The police found the big lion standing in the middle of the road and refused to move. It was later discovered that it was very scared and was just protecting its cubs. Called by the lioness Maya and the zoo staff, the lions finally found their way back to the enclosure. They remained within a few meters of the fence at all times. Rizuko was the first cub to return, followed by female calf Suri and male calf Kari. Meanwhile, Malika was sedated by the zoo's emergency response team so she could be handled safely. Otto the adult lion returned to the enclosure late. Malika was eventually brought back to the den by keepers who rounded up the lions just in time for the entrance to the tourist attraction to open that day. An ongoing investigation by the zoo found that the lions had been playing and interacting with the enclosure for about 20 minutes before it was breached. After the lions were able to slip out of the opening at 6.40 am, the alarm was activated and the zoo went into lockdown. The clips used to hold the wires and cables together malfunctioned, causing one of the wires to come loose, officials said. In turn, this creates a hole in the fence through which the lion can squeeze its way. In a statement, preliminary independent engineering advice was said to have determined that a molded clip holding the wire rope together had broken, which allowed the stay cables connecting the fencing mesh to the tension cables to come loose. Molded clips are clamps that hold cables together. After that, the lions were able to punch holes in the walls and slip through them. Tarona Zoo staff are relocating families who spent the night in buildings close to the fence. According to attendee Magnus Perry, they had to sprint somewhere between 50 and 70 meters to open the door. At 9 a.m., Tarana Zoo director Simon Duffy assured guests that the lion had been released into its natural environment and that no harm had been done to visitors or staff. The only people in the vicinity other than families who were camping were staff as the lion burst out of its enclosure before the zoo opened that day. 
An independent specialist forensic engineer is still conducting extensive checks for malfunctions in the complex mesh fencing system, according to a statement released by Taro Nazu. Their investigation into the dodgy escape is still ongoing. The zoo said the lions would remain in the outdoor logistics facility until professional engineering advice was obtained, and it was highly doubtful they would be able to return to the main exhibit before the holidays. Tarona Zoo Lion Escape Schedule 4 a.m., a family living in a tent near the lion enclosure is awakened by roaring. 6.30 a.m., the lion escapes the enclosure. 6.40 a.m., a lockdown alarm is sounded at the zoo and all staff, except the lion keeper, are ordered to shelter in a safe haven. About 50 guests were evacuated from their tents and moved to a safe area. 6.50 a.m., zookeepers get the situation under control and move the five lions back to their enclosures. 8 a.m., guests can return to their rooms. 8.28 a.m., Sydney radio presenter Ben Fordham announces Tarana Zoo is in lockdown after four lions escaped. 8.52 a.m., Tarana Zoo has released a statement confirming the incident, saying five lions escaped but returned to their enclosures. It said there was an emergency at Tarona Zoo this morning when five lions were found outside their enclosure. The zoo has strict safety protocols in place for such incidents. All personnel at the scene have been transferred to a safe area, and no guests or staff were injured. All animals are now in their exhibits and are closely monitored by zoo staff. The zoo is open as usual today. More details will be provided where possible. At 10.30 a.m., zoo officials confirmed that the escape was caused by a breach in the enclosure. In another bizarre video that went viral, a Kuwaiti woman was filmed walking down the street with a lion in her arms after it escaped from its owner's house. This is the moment a woman walks through the streets with her pet lion. The owner of the big cat can be seen in the video taken in Sabahia, south of Kuwait City. He was seen struggling to hold on to the animal as it scuttled around. The brief video, uploaded to YouTube on Sunday, shows the critter twisting and growling loudly while being held by its owner. After walking a few yards, the seemingly tired woman finally put the animal on the ground so she could take a break inside the house. On Sunday, the news website Al Amba reported that the lion managed to escape the enclosure in the Sabahia neighborhood south of Kuwait City. Environmental police were present before the big cat was brought back to the enclosure, report said. The police assisted the woman in bringing her under control. While it is illegal in Kuwait and many other Gulf states, there is a general cultural trend to keep exotic animals as pets. Following the sighting of a feral cat roaming Dubai's springs in June 2020, the municipality has decided to launch a new initiative to crack down on the possession of dangerous animals. However, it was later discovered that the photographed animal was actually a house cat. Both the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia have laws prohibiting people from owning certain types of pets. However, these rules are rarely enforced. In 2019, experts warned that East Africa's cheetah populations were at risk of extinction as cubs were kidnapped and sold to wealthy Arab men as pets. According to Dr. Lori Mark, who works for the Cheetah Conservation Foundation, as many as three-quarters of the cubs born to wild cheetahs in the Horn of Africa are kidnapped and sold to smugglers each year. This information has been provided to Mail Online. She warned that if nothing was done to end the trade, the creatures would become extinct within the next two years. If nothing is done, the Daily Mail Online found the video and pictures posted on Instagram shows how wealthy owners in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates use their big cats as status symbols driving around and taking photos with them at home. The videos and pictures were posted on Instagram in 2014. In 2014, another strange thing happened. Citizens of Norwalk, California, are on edge amid rumors that an African lion may be prowling the neighborhood. The only photos of the mysterious monster that have surfaced so far are shaky security camera footage showing the beast prowling the sidewalk. Professionals from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife analyzed the footage. Officials have determined that the cat-like animal is not a cougar. 
department officials were still unable to determine the species of the animal, according to authorities. They will continue to investigate. The appearance of the monster has Norwalk Mayor Marcel Redarte very interested. Redarte said the animal remains a mystery because its tail doesn't seem to match the morphological features of a puma. Authorities at a nearby zoo claimed that no big cats were missing from their Virginia facility. A year ago, people were terrified of a lion, but it turned out to be a Labrador. This event is similar to the one above. People are sometimes fooled by dog grooming tactics, but the walk of the mysterious beast in California has residents concerned. When a tigress left her cub in the hands of a man, he found himself at a loss for words. Still, he found the courage to do something unbelievable, and later, the tigress repaid his kindness. Yusuf lived with his wife and daughter in the bustling city. Here, they thrived in their busy lives. Yusuf was a historian by trade and assisted in the local offices. He was a specialist in his field, and his wife stayed at home and looked after their affairs, while his eight-year-old daughter attended school. Everything was as it should have been, that is until one dark, fateful day. It seemed like any other day. Yusuf had arisen for work earlier than the rest of the household. He thought he would pop out and get some donuts to treat the family. However, when he returned to wake his wife and daughter, he found a disastrous scene. His wife was frantic, crying and shaking. Their little girl, Amelia, wasn't responsive. She had a pulse but was completely unconscious. Mother and father quickly realized they needed to go to the hospital. That day, they found out that their daughter had been born with a genetic condition that made her very weak. Not only would she be unable to attend school in the future, but she wouldn't be able to lead a normal life at all. Yusuf and his wife were absolutely devastated. They had no idea what to do. They went home that day feeling utterly defeated. That is until they got an interesting suggestion from a family member. They recommended that they move to a beautiful little village out in the countryside. There, the way of life was different, slower, quieter, better suited for a delicate girl like Amelia. If they were to fully enjoy each other's company as a family, the city would not be the right place for them to live in. After much thought, Yusuf and his wife decided to do it. It would be an adventure for them that could change things up for the better. Amelia deserved to be surrounded by beautiful nature and loving people, people who appreciated the quality of life the country had to offer them. Of course, moving to the countryside offered challenges too. It wouldn't just all be rainbows and sunshine. The family would have to adjust to a different way of living entirely, one that was not fast-paced at all, but rather more community-based. Everyone had their role to play in helping the community thrive in its own way. There were people that raised livestock to provide meat to the townsfolk, whilst others farmed vegetables and grains. Yusuf and his family just had to find where they could fit into the equation, and this is where some problems began to arise. After a few weeks of living in the little village, Yusuf decided he would survey the surrounding lands to map them out. He had some plans to help modernize the village a little. Every day, he went further and further into the woods, slowly documenting as he went. However, one day, he came across something very disturbing. He hadn't been hiking for more than 10 minutes when he came across a contraption that looked unnatural amongst the beautiful nature around it. He approached it cautiously to find that it was a trap of some sort. He found this to be extremely strange. What on earth could someone be trying to trap with such a big device? The answer Yusuf found was shocking to him. He quickly made his way back to the village filled with questions and went straight to the lead farmer of livestock. Yusuf figured that if anyone was going to know what the trap's purpose was, this was the man to ask. He was right, however, the answer he found was not quite what he was expecting. The farmer explained that there was a tiger in the area, a tiger that routinely hunted the farmer's livestock. The villagers had grown tired of its attacks and therefore had planted traps all on the outskirts of the woods as a deterrent. Yusuf understood their motives but was appalled by the fact they seemed not to care whether the tiger was killed or not in the process. He was horrified at this information. 
He had been under the assumption that everyone in the village valued nature in its highest form, especially a precious wild cat like a tiger. He argued with the villagers about their actions but was outnumbered. It was simple, the big cat prevented them from having a successful season, and so it had to go. What the villagers couldn't anticipate, however, was Yusuf's tenacious attitude towards things he deemed as unjust. So he went to work dismantling the traps as fast as he could to save the animal from a horrible fate. He just didn't quite anticipate running into the actual tiger. It was his third day on the mission of dismantling the traps when he came across a situation he never thought he would ever experience in his lifetime. He had just started searching for the traps when he heard a strange low moan. At first, he couldn't quite place it, but he simply followed the sound to see where it led. He thought perhaps it was a new species of bird he hadn't yet spotted. Boy, was he surprised when he saw what it actually was. There before him, tangled in the trap, was a very small tiger. At first, he thought he was seeing things, but when he got closer, his fears were confirmed. There, in front of him, was a tiny tiger who had a broken leg from the horrific trap. Without hesitating, Yusuf began to try and release the trap. He was almost done but then mom showed up. The hair on the back of Yusuf's neck simply stood right up. He turned around to find himself faced with a fully grown tigress staring him down. He was so frightened he didn't know what to do. He simply backed away from the cub and stood still, waiting to see what would happen. That's when the strangest thing occurred. The tigress simply pushed her cub toward Yusuf with her big hat. It seemed she understood that only he could get her baby out of such a predicament. Yusuf didn't hesitate. He went to work straight away and released the cub from the trap. He held the poor little cat in his arms, unsure of what to do next. The tigress simply nudged her cub one more time, then turned her back and walked away. She had just given her baby to Yusuf. Yusuf was at a complete loss for words. Why did she just leave her cub with him? What was he supposed to do? He knew if he took the cub home, the villagers would protest it. But he also knew that if he didn't help the poor little animal, it wouldn't end well. So, he did the unbelievable. Yusuf simply wrapped the cub up with his jacket and made his way home. He knew that he could help the cub heal if given the chance, and that was just what he was going to do. It took about a week before the whole village became aware of the cub living in Yusuf's home. It was safe to say they were not very happy at all. What started off as mild complaints soon began to turn into really nasty comments and pranks being pulled on their household. And one day, the young people of the town went a little bit too far. They lured Amelia to go with them into the woods and then left her there. Naturally, Yusuf and his wife were absolutely frantic. How could they do such a thing? Their child was defenseless and unsure of how to get home. If they didn't find her, she could get really hurt. But then something unbelievable happened. As the couple was about to set off looking for her, Amelia emerged from the woods on the back of the tigress. The tigress had found the poor girl in distress and done what Yusuf had done for her cub, she had saved her. Yusuf found the courage to pet the tigress's hat and then led her to her recovered cub. The two of them reunited with a loud roar, and the entire community had the chance to watch both tigers leave Yusuf's home without harming him or his family. There and then, they realized that she was just a mother trying to provide for her cub, and decided to help Yusuf remove all the traps from the forest. They would learn to live in harmony with the wildcats, and in doing so, they would be in harmony with the whole world. What a beautiful ending! Would you have helped the cub? What do you think of farmers trying to trap a tiger? When certain events cannot be explained by science or logic, these stories are able to inspire fear in everyone. This is how myths and legends are born. This is especially true in small villages where rumors travel very quickly, and people tend to exaggerate for added entertainment. The story we are about to tell today is astonishing, unusual, and it tells how human beings are feared. Let's get started, the story takes place in a small remote village in the Far East, which is located on the outskirts of the Tiger Forest. One morning in January, a local resident went outside to check his surroundings. 
He was dumbfounded when he saw huge wolf tracks in the freshly fallen snow. They seemed to have come straight out of the forest, meandering along the road, and walking up and down the neighboring houses. Out of fear, the man ran home, picked up a gun, called a friend, and they set off on foot together. Hitting the road, hoping to track down and capture the intruder, can the two find any surprises? They found that the footprints of the two wolves entered a yard of local residents, but there were no traces of them going back on the ground. Does this mean that the wolves are still inside? The men readied their guns and knocked on the gate. The man who lived in the house heard the sound and came out. He heard the neighbors say that he didn't see any wolves. The surprised hunter returned home, but they were still worried, a few days passed, heavy snow fell, and now the whole village was covered with fresh snow. He went out into the street in the morning and saw new wolf tracks, which filled the whole village, so the hunter followed them to the house of an old couple who again denied the existence of wolves, and neither did they know where these footprints come from. Panic broke out in the village, no one can explain where these footprints came from, what kind of invisible wolf are they? Why did they come to the village and never leave, people started telling the story to each other, and each time they added their imaginations, one even said that he saw two werewolves wandering the village at night. People left the house in fear, kids were not allowed to go to school or play outside, the men organized patrols and went out every night in hopes of catching these unprecedented animals that were disturbing the peace, when they found nothing, the men realized their patrol had probably scared off the animals, so they decided to hide in different parts of the village and wait for them, and after several nights of hard work, they were finally spotted. One of them suddenly saw what they were waiting for. On the side of the forest, two huge shadows entered the village. It was obviously two huge wolves. They walked slowly along the previous route, and they wander in the yard, then they came to the house of an elderly couple and disappeared behind the gate. The people who had been watching them went to the fence and looked inside. What they saw made them stunned and confused, the owner of the house opened the door and let the two huge wolves in. Afterwards, he looked around, as if to make sure no one saw them, and closed the door behind him. The hunter started banging on the gate, yelling for him to come out immediately and explain to them what was going on in the house, and they realized that they could no longer hide from the wolves, and the old couple told them their story, it turned out that two years ago, while walking in the forest, the body of a female wolf killed by poachers was found, with two cubs lying near the body. At first, the couple thought the pups were dead too, but suddenly they made a barely audible noise and they picked them up immediately, the couple realized the pups were still alive, so they decided to take them home, they couldn't keep them tell anyone in the village about this because it is against the rules and wolves are usually killed because they pose a threat to local residents and livestock that are so, unbeknownst to everyone. They fed the wolf cubs at home and took them back to the forest, but, instead of what they wanted, the wolves did not want to be separated from their savior, and they often came to their house under the cover of night and played with them there until morning, and then they quietly returned to the forest. The old couple kept it as secret as possible, they knew that meeting the wolf would not end well, and they were terrified. The locals were moved by the story, and they agreed not to kill the docile wolves, but to let them return to the forest safely, after all, they did not touch anyone, and even drove the other wolves from the village. Friends, if you like this story, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel, we will tell many wonderful stories, hello everyone, in the following video, we will tell you an interesting story about a wolf who used his kindness to repay a human being. It was one summer, an old man was walking in the forest, he suddenly saw a wolf cub, it was lying under the bushes near the path, he was not as big as a puppy, the old man came to him, but the little wolf cub didn't run away, he was thin and sad, what happened to him? Why doesn't he run away? He thought to himself. When he got very close to the little wolf, the poor thing wanted to run, but he couldn't, he turned out his paw was broken, and the man couldn't leave him there alone, he felt sorry for the little wolf cub, so he put the kid in his bag and went home, at home the old man checked the wolf cub's paws, he was sure his bones were broken, how could this be? He puts a bandage on the animal's paw, which will help the bones grow back together, obviously, this is very painful for the wolf, he is very difficult, 
but he seems to understand that this person is trying to help him, then the man prepared a place for his new pet and went to feed him, the man called Gray, and about six weeks later, the pup was mostly recovered. His damaged bones seem to have grown back together, and while it is still a bit lame, this wolf pup loves to run around the yard wherever he is, and is quick to run to his owner whenever a man calls it beside, the animal eats what is in the man's hand, accompanies him to the forest like a puppy, and returns home obediently, Gray is a kind wolf who loves humans. Point one day a boy nearby saw this wolf and they even made friends. They were both small so they had the same interest and that was games. The boy brought different sweets to his friends every day. One day Gray disappeared and the old man couldn't find it anywhere, maybe its wildness came into play and it went to the forest where the wolf should live, the boy cried for a long time he longed to see his friend, and the old man promised the boy that when the boy was a little older he would bring him a puppy from the city. Two years passed, the old man completely forgot about his wolf, he lived alone in the house in the village. One day, the boy's mother came to the old man, she cried, she said her son went for a walk in the morning, then disappeared, probably he went to play in the forest and lost his way. The boy's mother ran to ask the people in the village to find the boy in the forest, and the old man took his hunting equipment and went to the forest to find him. For hours passed, suddenly, the old man heard something running out of the bushes, it made a loud noise, the old man picked up his gun and was about to shoot, at that moment, he saw a wolf jumping towards him, the beast was huge and grey and he was right next to him. He noticed that the man stopped for a moment on the path, and he glared at it angrily, and just as the old man was about to shoot, the wolf sprang up again, and he noticed that the wolf was limping on its front paws, and then suddenly he thinking of his grey, so the man with the gun yelled, grey. After jumping a few more times, the wolf stopped and turned its head. It looked at the old man for a long time, and then turned its head to run again, but it only took a few steps slowly and stopped to look back at him. The wolf recognized him. The man, it was really grey, the animal that lived in his yard like a pet dog two years ago, the wolf howled into the bushes of the forest, and it looked around as if telling the man to follow him, what does he want to do? Where does he want me to go? They walked about 100 steps, and suddenly, he saw the boy, who was sleeping in the bushes, and the wolf was sitting beside him. Ah, now I understand why you called me, cried the old man in surprise, you are here to watch over your friend. The man wanted to pet the well-behaved wolf, but the wolf took a step back, and it started whimpering like a crying puppy, and the wolf was still scared because the old man was a human, and humans are the worst enemies of wolves. In the past two years, the wolf has been used to living in the forest as a wild animal, but it knows the boy, that is its friend, so it decides to protect him in the forest. The man took the little boy in his arms, then turned to the wolf and said, thank you for saving the little boy, Gray, and now you can go. After saying this to the wolf, the man walked slowly towards the house, but Gray didn't leave, and he followed the old man, still limping a little, and whining, as if he wanted to say something, and they came to the end of the forest, here you can see the fields. The wolf stopped and looked at the man and the boy for a long time as they went away, and then slowly, as if reluctantly, he disappeared into the forest, and after a while the old man heard him howling, sad as a sob, probably, the wolf is saying goodbye to the man who saved it that day and its little companion boy, this is an amazing story, thank you for watching, remember to love the animals and do something for them, they will really repay you with their kindness, I wish you all the best.